Hey everybody and welcome to this episode of The Vape Team. It is episode 14. We have D. Jaquith or David Jaquith here with us tonight once again to share his knowledge of all things vape. We also have Mikey motherfucking vapes and I have an update from BK who is waiting on getting his Wi-Fi internet set up at his new house that he moved to. So I just wanted to let you guys know and say hello and uh, he says he misses everyone and he'll be back really soon. You'll notice that my eye looks like it's bleeding. Uh, that happened from dry hitting that shit uh, pretty bad in one of my videos. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. I went upstairs to grab a cup of coffee and all of a sudden my eye started hurting. And uh, I don't know. It's bloodshot. So please, if it starts bleeding, just hang with me and I'll, maybe I'll put a patch or something like that over my eye. But what's up? What's up, fellas? Hey, man. How you doing? Doing good. good. How you doing? What are you vaping on? Uh, I'm doing titanium on the EVIC. I'm doing, a, I think, a point. 0.18 single coil. Uh, actually, I got about three uh, titanium builds. Uh, this one's on the uh, Kanger Mini uh, uh, 25 gauge, seven wrap. Came out to uh, 0.18, and I'm using that milk. And then I'm also vaping on my typical Charlie Noble. I'm doing my uh, Blue Bay and my pecan. Pistachio, sorry, pistachio. From the Noble. Yes. Nice. I love their stuff. Yeah, it's tasty. How about you, Mikey Vapes? What's up, brother? What's up? Yeah, I am using the uh, the Evic tonight with a uh, smoke TCT nickel, and I'm using my SX Mini. Took it out of the closet. I was hiding in there. I haven't used this in a while. With actually with the Joytech Mega. Is that what it's called? The Mega Tank with yeah. the nickel coil that comes with the Evic. I got it on here. So I kind of like switched them up, doing a little test here. I think it's the and Eagle then, One Mega. Yeah. And then I'm using my uh, Snow Wolf. I got my Royal Hunter on there. And uh, I'm dripping this new stuff here. This is some pretty good juice here. It's from a company called V Clouds. It's called Heaven's Milk. It's a strawberry custard. Very good stuff. Yes. So what's up? Nothing, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a little... Bothered by this eye I've got going on here, it seems to be yeah. getting worse. Call BK uh, up to give you his sunglasses. Yeah, well, I, I just created a patch, so I think I'm, <laughs> I think I'm going to wear this tonight to save you guys from the grossness of the uh, of the eye. So anyway, uh, my depth perception is impaired, but my vape ability is not. So we are gonna we're gonna hit that shit tonight in the dry fashion, perhaps. Uh, actually, maybe not, because we were doing temp control. I have a surprise. Stay tuned during this episode because we are going to have a giveaway again. And hold on. I have, I'm feeling generous. You know, one of my favorite things to do during the week is this show. So what I'm doing is I'm going to give away another Racing Yellow EVEC tonight on the show. Ah, nice. Yep. Cool. So, Very so, nice. Stay tuned to the episode, and I'll be informing you how to win. And uh, I do know that the winner last week, uh, E. Fizzle, he received his already, and he's he's been uh, sharing with me how awesome it is. So uh, there you go. So anyway, I'm vaping tonight on <laughs> the, the M class, <laughs> the M class, pirate and, <laughs> This little M class that I'm vaping on. See, I wanted to compare the temp control chip in the J uh, for, for the M class, and I have an Eagle one with a nickel in there. I've got the Evic here with a nickel, and I also have the Evic with a titanium coil. And we're gonna we're gonna sort of just openly share our experiences with the same device. Um, when I initially did my first look video, um, I decided. By the way, I'm gonna take this patch off. I was just kidding. Um, when I did my first look video... It's better. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> totally, man. It looks awesome. I think I got gonorrhea of the eye or something. <laughs> Where have I been spending my nights? Hold on, I need a sip of coffee. Hold on. I've seen people do milk through there. I mean, you're trying to do vape through there, you know? Yeah. Um, where was I even going? Where my am I? Evic video. Yeah, my initial Evic video. My initial. Uh, I had... I had you know, sort of vaped on the nickel, tested a little cotton burn test, and 
I wanted to gain some more experience. So when I heard David got his um, EVEC, I was like, hell yes, that's going to be such an awesome thing to have on the show. And then Mike Vapes got his beautiful white one that I'm so jealous of. Um, it's beautiful. And I figured tonight we could just shoot the shit and talk about our experiences with, you know, nickel on there. Uh, I, I've actually been waiting for two weeks to get titanium in the mail, and it hasn't arrived yet. So uh, I haven't been able to wrap my own titanium coils, but I did get some tempered nickel, and I have been wrapping coils with that and uh, testing out the temp control function. And, you know, Mike, myself, and David all have unique perspectives on this, but I think we all sort of agree on certain things. The first thing I noticed, though, is the price. Okay, I had no idea when I did my first look what the price was going to be, and the fact that you can pick up this sexy de device without the tank for like fifty-seven dollars, right? I think as low as fifty-five, but yeah. Yeah, fifty-five. What do you guys think of the value of that? No brainer. Yeah. Um, the only thing, I, the only thing that worries me a little bit about it. Uh, one of my modder buddies uh, over at Vapor Lips uh, took one apart. Uh, I guess it was last night. Sent some pictures to you guys. It actually has, just so you know, has three lipos in it. They're uh, 1,500 ma each, which doesn't add up to 5,000. So I don't know how they get 5,000 out of it. But in the process of doing it, uh, one of his uh, blew up, or I should say, it shouldn't say blow up. It expanded, vented, in other words. And so I was a little bit concerned about that. I mean, it's so easy for it to to do that venting. It was literally just him, him taking the screws out, trying to pull the thing out, and this one. Yeah, so it almost vented on him just from pulling it out of the device. That's it. it apart. Yeah. yeah. I said you saw the well, you saw the pictures on it, I think. Yeah, I saw the pictures. Yeah. But uh, stating, uh, I'm surprised they stated uh, four five thousand when it's forty five actually. Yeah, I mean, you saw the picture on it. It's labeled, clearly labeled as... I'm not trying to, you know... Yeah. I'm, I'm just pointing out a fact to so you all know for a fact that that's actually... Uh, unless unless it's labeled 15, but in actuality it might be maybe like 16 and change. You never know. It's 1,500 ma. I don't have any right. idea. But maybe it's marked 15 and it's, it gives off more. You never know. Yeah, just like uh, 40 amp batteries. <laughs> 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 I think uh, five thousand sounded better for them. Yeah, I think five thousand sounds sexier than forty-five hundred. Yeah. yeah. Five thousand. <laughs> totally, man. Sounds good. good. It's still, it's, let me tell you this though. I've vaped the shit out of this thing, and I have yet to be able to go through it in a day. And I, I, I it, there's been a couple days where it was the only thing I was vaping on. So I don't really care. I, I'm just letting you know. Yeah. That's what I've noticed. Like uh, everyone's saying, "Oh, you know, it's rechargeable. I don't like that. I want to be able to replace my batteries. It takes six hours to charge full." And I agree, it is a bitch when you have to charge something for six hours. But you can just plug it in at night, and it's fully charged in the morning, and it lasts all day, even running temperature control. So, yeah, I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. If you don't remember to charge, you can pretty much screw. But for fifty-five bucks, buy two. Right. <laughs> exactly. If you're rolling like that. There you go. Um, Mike and I were talking before the show started, and um, I, I had set up. You know, one of the one of the frustrating things is that there, and maybe we should start uh, like a temp control organization that like rates devices and have a set of standard of what is proper functioning temperature control. I mean, the problem is, is that if the goal is to not burn your wick, right, um, and to regulate temperature at what you want it to be for the vape that you want. Uh, if I find a satisfying vape to be 520 degrees, is that sort of defeating the purpose of having a temperature control device? Absolutely not. Uh, I've gone as high as 550 on a thing. So, uh, and what happens if your tank empties at 550? You'll know it. <laughs> you'll start tasting shit. <laughs> right. So, the, so, the, so, what's the point then of the temperature control? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an idea here. When you do tanks. And you're, we're all kind of in the same boat that we're chain vapors, and you keep on doing it. Now, if you do normal canthal, you notice how it kind of keeps on going up higher and higher and higher with temperature, and it changes the way that juice tastes as you're vaping it. The hotter it's getting, it's building up heat. Well, the cool thing about temperature control is pfft, it's going to stay. At, once it gets to its, you know, temperature, it's just going to stay there. So you're getting a consistent vape. I think that uh, BK kind of agreed with me when I said, well, an ideal temperature control is a boring vape. In other words, when you start it up to the point you're done, no matter how many times you vape it, 
you know, you're at the same temperature. It's consistent. So that's mainly what I'm going for. I mean, most of the time, 480 degrees. I've even done cotton burn tests at 480 degrees. You're going to brown up your, your cotton pretty good, but you're not going to, you know, light on fire if it's working right. Right. Well, I like to run mine anywhere between 420 to 450. That's where I usually run it at. Yeah, I mean, there's not, you know, like I said before, whatever, you know, temperature floats your boat. It really depends upon, you know, how warm of a vape you uh, want. Uh, some tanks have, uh, actually will hold the heat a little bit better. In other words, your your vape at the same temperature is going to seem hotter, even though at the coil, because you got to remember, the temperature isn't what's coming to your mouth. The temperature is whatever is at the coil. So if you got a you know longer chimney or there's more airflow, particularly more airflow, and that's cooling and mixing uh, the, the hot air and it's making it cool, then it's going to seem cooler even at the 420 versus, like on a K-Fun, 420 degrees is or 440 degrees, 450 degrees is relatively hot in comparison yeah. to something like a sub tank. Right, right. You got a lot more air flowing fl through mm -hmm. it. But at the coil, that's the temperature. That it's a, they're the same temperature. Right. So Brian, yes, uh, we're talking before we got on air about the the two tanks you have, both the same uh, coils. Yes. Both with uh, the same temperatures. Right. And uh, one is on the SX, and the other one's on the EVIC. Do you right. feel a difference? A slight difference. Um, the way that, well, just to give you some numbers here, I have the um, Ego One Mega with a nickel coil in here, 35J at uh, 430 degrees on the M class. And uh, now, what power mode are you running it at? Standard. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so let me vape that again. No, the reason I ask is because if you, if you got a powerful or powerful plus, then, you know, that's kind of yeah. skewing everything. Yeah. So that hits. It's not very good. I wouldn't vape there. I'd turn it up much higher than that. But it does produce vapor, and it is flavorful. Um, I have the same coil in this device. I have it set to 35 watts, 430 degrees. And uh, let's vape that. You can see weak clouds. Yeah. It's a much cooler vape. It's not as rich. I did make sure that I locked in the uh, resistance, and I also made sure when I put it on that it did say um, new coil detected. So it's set right. But I guess ultimately, um, my real question is, if I can turn something up to find that level of satisfaction, and then once I hit that level, it's consistent. For me, personally, that's all I'm looking for. I don't really care. I don't ever vape any of my temperature co control devices low enough in the temperature setting to not dry hit if the tank empties. Right. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I have a qu another question. Uh, I, uh, yeah. David was saying something about uh, in, when we were chatting. He thinks the EVIC is maybe like 20 to 30 degrees underpowered. Is that true, David? Uh, I, this is the way that I could tell, and like I said, this is a subjective test, the best I can do. And that's me taking the same exact tank and trying it on an SX, for example, then trying it on a DNA, and then, then trying, now we're talking about nickel now, and then trying it on that uh, EVIC. And it seems, it, I'll tell you what, but I've had it be everywhere from almost exactly correct to feeling like it's about 20 to 30 degrees different. Right. So that's what I would like to see now. Brian, what if you take the EVIC now and put it up to like uh, 460, for example, and do another comparison and see All right. if you feel any similarity there? Right, and, and that's the whole thing that I was saying was to have a standard to say this is what we're getting temperature, true temperature wise versus this, and this is what we want. It would be nice to have, you know, that this meets the standards for a temperature control device. Right. You know? Well, if you use a tank and you've got another temperature control device, at some point you're going to be able to dial it in exactly whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, in other words, subjectively. Subjectively, you're probably within 10, 20, de assuming you've got a, an, a one, let's say, for example, a DNA is doing it, bam, directly uh, at 450 degrees, okay, and one seems a little bit warmer or cooler. You can still adjust it to where you're going to be almost exact, even though um, you may, your temperature setting may be a little bit off. Now, you know, the one thing that I've had some issues with is that, uh, in particular with the EVIC, is that if I have any coil, whether it's titanium or nickel, if it's below 0.1 ohm, 
most of the time, I've only had it happen once, most of the time it will not do give me a new coil, even though I'm using something completely different. You see what right. I'm saying? And so what I would recommend doing is this. If you don't if you're putting a new tank on, whether it be titanium or nickel, and you're not seeing a new coil, assuming you've got it unlocked, okay, you know what I'm saying, going through the menu. At that point in time, the first thing that's going to go in my mind is you're probably not locked in properly. I know that you can go through the menu and get down to the ohms and then do that lock, but it really doesn't work the way that a new coil at least appears to lock to me. When I see a new coil, it's pretty dead on. I've been very pleased with it. When it doesn't do a new coil, it's all over the freaking place. So right. low, I, I know it's, what is it rated, like 0.005 ohms or 0.06? Or 0.06 something, or something. Somewhere, somewhere in that range. Yeah. Uh, even though it's rated at that and it'll work at that, it doesn't seem like it locks in at that. I think the ideal mm -hmm. coil is 0.1 to maybe 0.12 up to 0.18, something below 0.2. Mm -hmm. I, think that's, I think that's a sweet spot. At least that's what I've Yeah, that's why I can't figure out why they gave that point two coil with it. It's like, huh? Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Go figure. <laughs> what do yes. you with that story, what do you see? Yeah, once we went up like twenty watts or twenty degrees, then it started uh -huh. to vape it, it vaped the same. Okay, so yeah, so so what David is saying then he's his taste because he's got the most knowledge with that. From all of this building, I guess it probably is a little underpowered. Now, the way that I like to vape this, uh, like right now, I just raised it to 35 watts. I could go up to 40 or 50; it doesn't matter. Uh, it, it just hits maybe a little bit quicker, ramping up the the, the uh, temperature. But I like it at like 550. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, look at this this way. Um, a DNA 40, for example, the sweet spot is between 0.1 and 0.16. That's the sweet spot. On an SX, it's from point, you know, maybe 0.06 to 0 0.11, 0 0.12. 0.1 being the, the common, uh, you know, denominator in there. I'll tell you what I try to do is I try to build all of my bills between 0.1 and 0.12 somewhere in there and the reason that I do it is because I can put it down one device to another device to another device because if, if you got them where they're not overlapping then it's a pain in the you know what you know what I'm saying yeah. in other words, you're, you're almost married then to one device which kind of sucks and I, like I said I don't think the problem necessarily is that it doesn't have enough power it's not I think the problem is is the temperature control isn't tuned to anything under 0.1 ohm properly and I don't think it's tuned to anything above 0.18 properly. Will it work? Yes, but I think it's going to be off, is my point. You're going to have to do temperature adjustment to get it to tune correctly. To tune correctly. Yeah. Um, I, I, was, I was actually frightened when I first got the box in the mail and I opened it, and I, I said, oh, no, this is their first temperature control device. There's no way that it's going to function really well. And um, I was blown away by how well it does function for their first shot at temp control. With that said, for the price and for the fact that it has little quirks here and there, it really is a well-built, beautiful device with a long-lasting battery. So as much as we're sort of nitpicking tonight, we're trying to be open and honest about our experiences, I would wholeheartedly recommend this device uh, without any hesitation whatsoever. Oh, hell yeah. I agree. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be buying another one. I mean, just to have another one in case I, oops, forgot to uh, charge it. I mean, for And just to clarify, David has the DNA 40s. He has authentic stuff. So, I mean, it's not like... <laughs> he wishes. <laughs> Mike, you have that, right? I got two of them. Yeah. <laughs> I want to do a first uh, time exclusive uh, showing on uh, the vape team tonight. I'm going to do a cotton burn test live on the vape team for everybody. With what? With the EVIC. Oh, good, 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 good. All right. Right now, I got it set at 460. You guys see it? That's on the upper end. You're going to get brown. All right, check it. You guys watching? Look, look. There's your, there's your cotton. That little line on there? Yep. That's all it did. At 460. It's right on the money. For for that temperature, it's right on the money. Right. So, 
Four sixty. So you figure cotton singes at what? They say four fifteen is the actual. Four fifteen. Well, yeah, when it starts getting a, like a light chestnutty brown, whatever you want to call it, honey brown. Yeah. So at four twenty, it doesn't leave no mark on there. Four thirty, four forty, it doesn't. At four sixty, it gave it that little, that little, just a little bit on there. Well, I'll tell you this. I've been doing, you know, 500 degrees plus. As long as your cotton's saturated, uh, I've had, I pulled out cotton that had absolutely no marks in it whatsoever. As long as it's got some amount of juice on it, it won't uh, even brown the cotton. Here, I'm going to do it at 500 for you guys. 500 right now. Smoked it a little bit. There you go. Where's the camera? There you go. There you go, right there. That was at 500. Yeah, it seems to be uh, right on the money. That's what yeah. I would expect. Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there's been a lot of... Get that a lot cigarette of, out of there, man. Bad, bad. There have been a lot of comments in the, uh, in the, in the comment <laughs> section about my eye not being good, so I figured I might as well, I might as well go incognito tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, you know what? It might have happened. I was I was vaping this LE80 earlier with this little Velocity clone, and I forgot to drip, and I had it set to like 4.8 volts, and I took a hit, and all of a sudden, in inside <laughs> on the build deck, I heard, <laughs> and a flame was coming out of the top. <laughs> so that might have something to do with what's going on with my eye tonight. I just want to say, you popped a blood vessel. Yeah. Um, so. One thing I've been wanting to say, and this is just a short little tip about how when I go about building any temperature controlled coil that I think that, you know, for me anyway, it works really good, is I first put the coil in, I make damn certain that it's tight. Not, not where I'm going to, you know, break a lead or anything like that, but relatively tight. Then I go ahead and I pulse it a little bit. I'm looking to see if anything turns red. Anything turns red, you know, something's screwed up. But if, it's, if that happens, uh, then I'll go back, retighten it. I put it under the sink to get it cool. Then I go ahead and I do it again. And if it acts right and it says, you know, no cotton or whatever, you know, dry coil or whatever, then at least I know it's working. Then, then before I put my final cotton in, I've got, you know, little pieces of extra cotton that I've got from other builds. I put that in there and I always do a burn test before uh, you do a temperature control. If it works and it passes the test, then build your final coil. I see a lot of people just skipping a bunch of steps. And imagine if you had your coil to where it was, you know, turning the wire red, and you're trying to go, and you're doing your temperature control. What the hell is this? So you've got to calibrate the coils before you do your final build. Because taking a, take, putting new co uh, cotton in is no big deal. Taking apart and complete addy, draining it, and going through that pain in the ass is, uh, you know, I think it's a smarter way of doing it. You're going to have less, less headaches, less aggravation. Do you guys do that? I do. Yeah. Oh, by the way, how do you like your tempered? I like it a lot. It's a lot easier to build with. I can tell you that right now. Stop touching your eye. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I, I, so far the tempered is a lot stiffer, and um, it's easier to sort of wick it without yeah. messing up your spacing. And um, I like it. It's good. Actually, you know what, David? I, I never got that shipment from that company. I ended up getting the 26-gauge tempered from uh, Lightning Vapes. Oh, good. They got it now? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. There you go. It's cheap. It was like 6 bucks or something for... Yeah. Well, yeah, years. let's put it this way. Getting it where I was getting it before, the, the, the cost wasn't the wire. I was getting it over here. Yeah. <laughs> the shipping. You know, it's, if you're going to buy from there, from your, anything from Europe, I'm going to go for broke. Buy a bunch of crap because, you know, the shipping is stupid expensive. Yeah, somebody had said that um, setting your temperature, v VG starts to break down above 530 degrees. Do you think it's wise to vape above that? And I don't know. I mean, I know this. Um, when we don't have temperature control, we have no idea what temperature we're vaping. But I know that if I hit this um, with, camp with a Canthal build and I vape it the way that I like to do it for clouds, it's a hell of a lot higher than 550. <laughs> the, the danger temperature that I'm aware of of everything that I've read is... Anything that's above 600, in particular, anything above 650 degrees. 600, I'm not even worried about. It's 600, 600, 650 degrees and above that. I mean, we're the bad stuff. 
that doesn't mean it, it may break down and start tasting not right, but uh, none of the aldehydes start forming after until 650 degrees or higher. But the reality is this. Most people who have done temperature control knows this, know this. More than likely, you're going to have, remember all the coil issues, not trying to rehash it, but, you know, if you get a hot spot on a coil, I've had more aldehydes that I've vaped in temperature control 10 to 1 over what I've done in canthal. You know, that's just the truth of it. We've all had that. If, if anybody's built nickel coils, uh, titanium doesn't, I, actually the weird thing is I haven't had many issues with titanium. Go figure. Probably because I'm using a thicker gauge wire for titanium. I would recommend, this is another thing for titanium, obviously you want to get grade 1. Grade 1 through 4 is, uh, they're just as pure. The difference is, is the uh, resistances. Most of these devices are going to be geared for uh, grade 1 and I rec recommend either 20, actually I recommend getting both, 26 and 24 gauge titanium. And that, you know, it's sort of like this. When you were vaping, when you vape on, let's say, 24 gauge, do you have a better experience than when you're on 26 or 28 gauge? No. Don't, you don't get a fuller, richer, warmer vape when you're going on 24? Well, it, it depends on the wraps and the resistance, yeah. Well, my point is, is this, is that the thing that I like about doing on titanium is essentially I'm getting that same thing, plus I'm getting temperature control on top of it. Right, right, right. I've been really pleased with titanium. titanium. The weird thing is, is that people don't maybe know is on my SX here, my IPv4, I don't know if you can see it or whatever, Yeah. but those are my settings for titanium. I'm running at uh, 250 degrees, I recommend t 300 degrees and less. You can do a uh, cotton burn test up to about 220 degrees, 230 at the most, and they'll, they'll start burning your, up your cotton. And I'm running a 0.11 uh, ohm coil, and this is titanium on a SX. It so does David, the same thing on my David, DNA. Let me, let me ask you a question real quick before you, or you can make it. Go ahead. Okay, what? Sorry. If, if the cotton burns at 220 degrees, it, because it's off. And we're talking titanium now. I know, but is it still two hundred, really two hundred twenty degrees, or is it a lot hotter than that? It's just reading. It's, it's off by two. It's, the resistance is different than what nickel is. And as, if the device is not programmed for that, it won't know. So the the, the algorithm right. is not set for the, it. The, the algorithm, the graphs uh, aren't uh, aren't uh, uh, no, they're not not dialed in for titanium properly. How how about the EVIC titanium? It's been uh, I'm surprised. Uh, I've been really surprised. It's it's. It's more accurate than I anticipated. I wasn't. Ex Let's put it this way. I was thinking it was going to be uh, in leagues with the M80 and a bunch of bullshit. What yeah, I was me thinking. too. Yeah. At least I don't know necessarily about for nickel, but I felt for titanium. I thought it was going to be a bunch of shit. Well, reality is no. It, I'm 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 shocked. I am literally shocked. It's very accurate for titanium. Very pleased What's with it. Your titanium on the EVIC. Where do you vape it at? What's your settings? Well, I'm, this, on, on a single coil uh, right now, I'm doing, uh, it's a 0.18 build. I'm using about 32 watts, and I've got it set at 530 degrees. I could go a little bit higher with the wattage, but same thing as like with nic uh, nickel. You've got that heat build up, and I'd rather not overshoot it. Probably what I should be using is closer burn to... On that though? Uh, same. Same temperature. Their temperature is right. Their temperature is right. So at four, so it, it would do the same. It would do the same whether or not you're on. Yeah. Okay, so you would. Okay, I got you. All uh -huh. right. So no different. Okay, I got. You. That's why I was confused. I didn't know if it was. Well, what same. titanium does is this. In the beginning, it takes off about the same as far as far as a difference in ohmage. Okay. The ohms uh, change almost the exact same is what they do in nickel. The difference is the resistance is off. You see what I'm saying? So therefore mm -hmm. the temperature is off. The temperature is off about 200 to about 220 degrees. You can do it, uh, if I do it on a DNA, I, I get it all over the place, okay? It's not accurate on the higher end of the temperature spectrum. If I'm at the lower end, it's fairly accurate. But if I'm trying to do like 500 plus degrees Fahrenheit on a DNA or an SX, eh, not so much. You know what I'm saying? It's not as accurate. In other words, I can have it, I'll vape it one time, it'll see one temperature. I'll vape it another time, it'll see another temperature. Because the resistance isn't changing the same. But this, on this EVIC, seems to be uh, dialing in you know, pretty good. Now, the way that you kind of overcome that, that inconsistency on a DNA or, or a non-titanium 
uh, like a nickel base, is that you ha you have to lower your temperature and you have to fiddle with your uh, wattage and you can get it to do a reasonably good job. I got you. What what about all the all the chitter chatter among some of the vendors that are uh, that sell wire and they were they talk about the dangers of uh, titanium, you know, igniting and things like that. I've exploded uh, canthal, 24 gauge canthal. I've had go all over the place. I had shards falling on me of canthal. So I mean, is that I've had more problems with canthal in that regard. Now, yes, if you're pulsing, over pulsing titanium, in other words, you're making it red hot, in other words, unregulated, or not necessarily unregulated, but if you're, if you don't have temperature control on it, something like that, uh, and you're glowing them red, well, first off, you don't want to do that. You don't want to get over, uh, I, I don't know what the ignition temperature is for, tit for titanium one. Uh, I'm going to guess it's going to be over 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, you're close, almost 3,000. You're talking about making the metal white hot and then yeah it'll, it'll take off on you. But if I took canthal, have you ever done this with canthal? Uh, taking it, use those ceramic tweezers and then pinch them and then over pulse it and have one uh, explode on you or fall apart on you? I've done that by hitting the side of, <laughs> of my Addy. <laughs> it shorts it. Alright, but you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, so I know what you're saying. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, is, is there a danger with it? In, te in temperature control, I'm not worried about it. You know, any of these things uh, I'll give you an example. This last night, I still don't know what the hell happened with my uh, Hannah. I took the batteries out. I know it's got the charger, and I forgot to charge the damn thing up. And yes, it's a pain in the ass because you got to take out these two screws. Bottom line is, I took the batteries out. I, I don't know if I put a battery in backwards or whatever it was. I put a battery in this thing, and then I had a. I, thank God it didn't explode, but I had a big bunch of sparks popping out of this thing. The wire that's on the top positive uh, melted off. <laughs> Well, so okay, you know this thing's screwed, and thank God all it did is uh, got it so hot that it uh, desoldered the positive lead on the uh, on one of the uh, battery contacts. Didn't ruin my batteries, thank God. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't get the thing out right away, so I threw it on the floor. I didn't want to have blown up my face. Mm. And uh, so anyway, soldered it back. So my point is, there's dangers with any of this stuff. Yeah. You know, this yeah. thing's got a lipo pack in it. You pull the thing out, it's gonna, it has a, it's going to probably not necessarily explode on you, but it's going to vent. More, more than likely. If you've got a, a, a very skilled modder that tries to take the thing out and it does it to him, imagine what it would do to you know, somebody like you or me. So with titanium, the other thing that everybody's worried about was titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide doesn't form the same sort of, you know, they're saying, saying about the bad ti uh, titanium dioxide. There is a, a, a type of nanotubes, but they have to be synth synthesized in acid and an acid with titanium, not with you trying to pulse it. You may have some granulation of some a, a, and a film of, of titanium oxide if you pulse the stupid, you know, like an idiot. Okay, don't pulse titanium red hot. You won't have a problem with it. Bottom line, you won't have a problem with firing up. You won't have a problem with uh, titanium dioxide uh, formation. And let me get this another thing straight about titanium dioxide. Dunkin' Donuts until just a few months ago. Half the white stuff that was on the top, beside the sugar, that was added to make it whiter, was titanium dioxide. It's an approved FDA uh, chemical. For inhalation, right? Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I, inha I inhale my donuts, but... Uh, Actually, you're right. The powder on top of a donut, when you, when you take it in and you go to breathe, it does go down your mouth and throat. Well, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I got the, it. The difference is, is this. Is titanium, there's different forms of titanium dioxide. There's titanium that creates those nanoparticles or whatever. That has to be synthesized in an acid base, not on a coil, okay? And, it, and it, for any formation of it on a coil, it's going to take it to the point where you're going to have the metal red hot. Don't make your metal red hot. Yeah. That's another thing about titanium, too. When I've been doing the coils that I've been building with it, the same rule applies uh, with any wire. If you take regular canthal and you start pulsing it, you've got hot spots on it, right? Well, I guarantee it with titanium, you're going to have hot spots on it. So the way that you get away from the hot spots and so where temperature control is going to work the best is do a space coil, the same as what you would do on your nickel, and you won't have any problems with it. And um, lastly, what do you what do you think about the um, stainless steel coils? I know that there's one company. I think was it uh, was it Joytech? No, no, uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, what the heck? UL. Huh? The UL. UL. 
Yeah, UL, the crown tank. Comes yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in for a second. Oh. Go ahead, Mike. I, I, I know there's some. I know there's some. Uh, there's a tank coming out that's gonna have stainless steel in it. I know that. UL, yes. UL the company's called UL, and the crown. They have the crown tank. Their uh, coils are stainless steel. Now, from what I found out is that UL, before right, what they do is their their actual uh, main forte is making coils. They actually supply. 80% of the coils that we use now. Yeah. They make coils for, for example, like for Joytech, for Aspire, for Kangertech. They make their coils. Yeah. They make their coils, and they and then these companies buy it from them. So they were the first to do the stainless steel coils. Now, a new company, a new company, another company that's going to start using them is uh, Aspire and their new tank. No, that's what I was thinking about. Aspire, yes, I saw, I saw that. They're going to also have now stainless steel coils. So, but I have a question going back to titanium. I heard something about with the titanium wire. If it's not shiny, then it's no good. No. Normally, the way that I get titanium, at least so far, the wires that I've gotten. Okay, I've only gotten three reels of it so far. Right. Uh, it normally is like a grayish color. It normally it looks like it's it, it it is it's covered with the stuff that's covered. It's covered with two things. You got to clean. I clean it off anyway. Is it's covered with uh, machine grease. Same thing as any of these other things. Very little machine grease. Okay. Very little of it. The the black stuff that's on there is carbon. And you just wipe it off, and that's it. Right. Or you can burn it off, but I, I what I do is I you can take a washcloth or put it under water. Personally, I'm a little bit anal. I take isopropyl alcohol, 90 percent. I uh, put it in a on a on a little paper towel, clean it off. I'm done. Right. As far as it being shiny, it's not overly shiny now. All right. I mean, it doesn't look like stainless steel in your mind would look. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. It's like a grayish. I see a lot of chit chat that was on the earlier about the DNA 200. And uh, I heard something. This is a rumor that someone said to me that uh, they heard on the internet saying that the DNA 200 is supposed to do uh, temperature control with Canthal. Have you uh, heard? Of no. The only thing that I've heard about, and I can give you that link. Um, the only thing that they're officially doing right off the right out of the gate is nickel. That's it. Right. Now, don't get me wrong. You can program it in for whatever type of wires that you want. I seriously doubt anybody's going to actually ever get Canthal correct. The reason is, is this. It's an alloy. It's not a pure metal. And, and I realize that the mixture is about the same. The difference is, is that there's such a small little difference in the ohm change between one temperature and a crazy high temperature, there's no way to really regulate it that way, short of putting a probe in. If something, if, it, if there was an Addy or tank or whatever, and it has some sort of basically a temperature probe on it, sure. There's no reason you can't do it that way. But as far as measuring it through resistance, I, I don't ever see that necessarily happening. I mean, you know, I'd be surprised. Maybe, maybe a different alloy of Canthal, but Canthal A1, at least the stuff that I'm aware of. I mean, you look at your, uh, you, you can take out uh, one of your uh, other boxes, take it on a um, SX, okay? Because it, it reads out the three digits when you're trying to lock it in. Get it really cold, get it really hot, lock it in, and look at the difference. You're going to see it down to three decimal places. There's going to be a very teeny little difference between it scalding hot and uh, I've just got it out of the ice box, literally. Right. Now, this, this is the other thing that kind of upset me, though, about the... There's two things that upset me about the Volve that they're doing. The w number one thing is is that uh, there's three battery types that they're going to possibly support. Uh, three 18650s in series, a LiPo battery, which I will not use a LiPo... Period. Now I'm okay with a LIFE battery, which is the lithium iron uh, battery. Now this is the crazy thing. They're they're fine. I have no problems with those types of batteries. I I, I did a lot of, of hobbyist modeling. I don't have a problem with it. But let me tell you this: price a charger, a fast charger on one of those things, like a hobby charger. They go on the cheap side. They're eighty dollars, ninety dollars, all the way up to two hundred dollars plus. The bad thing about a lipo is I'm, it, not only can it vent, it can start on fire, and it usually expands. I mean, there's a lot of uh, videos you can watch them on the internet. I don't, I would not recommend people using lipo batteries for vaping. I'm certain that there's a bunch. I've used it for since day one, and I've had no problems. Okay, the problem is, is this: 
take you one, as one person, multiply you by five million, there's going to be a whole lot of people that are going to have problems with it. There's people that have problems with 18650s, crying out loud. And th those things vent, vent like baby stuff compared to what a LiPo would do. Now, an LIFE battery is fine. Now, this is the other thing about the DNA. If you've got to have that big honking battery, how are you going to have those little... How are you going to fit it into one of these things? Seriously, how are you going to fit it into that? We don't know. So the point is, is this, all these modders and all the people that I know that are really heavy, heavy in the DNA 40s, you know, they like their little wood boxes. They like their, their little, uh, you know, C-clamp boxes. I mean, you know, not, sorry, not C-clamp, C-frame boxes. All those little teeny-weeny little mods with the single 18650 battery in it. The problem is the DNA 200 won't fire that stuff. So what are those modders going to do? I mean, you're going to be stuck with... This is what you're going to be stuck with. You're going to be stuck with something like this on a DNA 200. Don't get me wrong. I will buy a DNA 200. I guarantee it. In fact, I'm just about to pre-order uh, uh, um, one of their uh, boards. I think it's cheap. It's 80 bucks. I mean, I don't have a problem with that. The problem that I've got is that I don't want a huge honking box. I like these little boxes. So what does that leave them to do? This is the th thing I can't figure out, at least looking at the specs that I've looked at it, is it, it, is it won't go down to 60 watts and then 120, and then you know 180 or 200 uh, watts. It doesn't have that stepping based upon power. It just everything I've read. I'm hoping that what I've read is incorrect. But it was one of the companies that's where you can pre-order the uh, DNA 200 board. They've only listed it as one input, and that's it. They said you can use three 18650s, maybe a lipo or an LIFE battery. That was it. And, and also, uh, by the way, this is all pre-release speculation and hearsay, and none of us have the release version of it, so w more will be revealed in the coming weeks and months, I'm sure. And it's also upgradable, so you know, I'm sure that if the market demands certain changes, they can always adapt things in the future. Well, this is what I'm guessing that they possibly are going to do, because uh, you know, they, it involves taking a lot of heat for two things. The screen thing, screen gate, and the other thing that they've taken a lot of crap about is um, it's only 40 watts. So they went from, <laughs> I mean, literally one extreme to the crazy extreme on the other end. They're going, you know, lipos and 200 watt boxes. I don't have a problem with 200 watt. Don't get me wrong. I don't have a problem. I, I prefer to have a little little box. So this is what I'm thinking they may do. They may have a second uh, DNA series, maybe a DNA 100. I don't have any idea. DNA. I think they're gonna do it. I think they're gonna. They went high to capitalize because everybody because of the high wattage. And mm -hmm. what they're gonna do now is they're gonna start dropping down for all the modders, for the small, they're going to do like the hundreds, they're going to do a 60 watt one, a 50, whatever, they're going to, all different, different wattage ships they're going to do. Well, see, that's the thing that I'm kind of hoping that they do. Uh, this is the difference. The, the advantage, and the reason that this is so expensive, this SX Mini M class, it's relatively a dinky board compared to what's in this IPv4. People are wondering, how come the IPv4 is so big? How come the S, or excuse me, the Segoli, the 150 that's coming out, you've seen that with temperature control? You know, the reason it's so high is because this whole length, this whole complete length, top to bottom, is a board. It's huge. The board on here is small. So I'm thinking that, you know, they may do the same sort of thing and do what Yehi's doing, is have, you know, one that's a modder's board, uh, in a sense of you know 200 watts, and they may have one that's for a you know a pro builder mod or with it, something that wants a smaller board. And they may have something that's a little bit smaller. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think another reason why they uh, I th me personally, this is what I think. The reason why they came out instead of going like, for example, making a DNA 60 watts, you know, so releasing that or 50, just to go a little bit more than 40. They went to 200 because I think that the, uh, their sales have hurt because of the SX Mini. And I, don't, I don't have any doubt about that. And they're afraid that if SX Mini, if Yihi comes out with a dual 18650 mod with that chip, because that chip that's in the M class could do 150 watts. I want to show you something here. Oh. Uh, if you, can, you know what? I think that's I don't, why I, they, did, they jumped out of 200 watts. So they could be they could come out with it first as a DNA chip and for the sales. I want to show you this is this is what's in your SX M class right now. This is the this is the size of the chip board. I shouldn't say chip board right here. Okay, 
I want to do it in comparison to what you've got for the IPv4. You see how you see how the difference is in the overall length and height. It's about half the height. The board that's in this IPv4 is two of these practically in length. It's just as long, almost from top to bottom, if you've ever seen it. Have you taken that apart and seen it yourself? What this? I've yeah. seen people have taken them apart. I've seen it. No, yeah, no. Have I? No. Uh, well, one thing too about this is that you've got the silver one. I want to show everybody this. Is why I've always been pushing this black one. Look how easy it is to see that screen on the black. Yeah, that, that's the way it should have been from the beginning. It's beautiful. Yeah. No. You know what, Sherlock? I don't know why they didn't do it. Now, one thing I did do because I know everybody's complaining about juice getting down into the, you know, the charger. If you can see it right, oh well, shit, it's all black. But if you can see it right here, you can't see it. You can see maybe a little reflection. I put a piece of electrical tape over it just in case because I heard some people, I don't know if it's right, wrong. Another thing that everybody's complaining about is, you know, these things being loose or whatever. On the black one, I think the black one, they got it right. I have had zero issues with this. Yeah. None. My, mine was not loose. My, my original one with the messed up screen wasn't loose either. No, it wasn't? Okay. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. I do have a problem with the IPv3 LI uh, sliding door, though. Oh, really? I, I don't have yeah. that one yet. Yeah. Why? What does it bother you? I love the door. Do you? I think it's, it's perfectly tensioned on it. It doesn't move, and I just it just slides off nice. Um, the problem I have with mine is I feel like when I push this up, it's, it's not locking into the little uh, ball. I feel like the only thing that's holding it on, which is okay, is these little rubber uh, pads they put in the bottom here. Uh -huh. I don't feel a snap of that ball when it when it goes in. So it's kind of like, see that when I do this? The ball's not holding this in place at all. Is that a retail version? And also, yeah, it is. And also, it looks like they had a plan to use two of those balls, and then they covered it up. Mm -hmm. so that it wouldn't short, I guess. That somebody told me today that this little plastic piece on here so the batteries don't hit the case, I guess, if they're loose. I don't know. But there was another hole there at the bottom for uh, the little ball bearing to go into. I think the reason, primary reason that that plastic's there is noise. It's one thing, you know, it's, it's hitting rattle piece noise. of plastic. Yeah, rattle. Yeah, yeah, rattle. Which is cool. I don't care about that, but I, it does look like they had another idea and then they scrapped it at the last minute. With that uh, little hole that was in the cover. So I know you're expecting when you're putting it on slowly to hear the ball clip in, right? Not even to clip in, but like I have a lot of other devices that have that same exact ball, like the 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 E square. Uh -huh. And the E square, when I when I snap it in, I can feel it go over the little ball. But with this, it, it's 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 almost like that rubber is the only thing holding this on. It's not the ball on mine. Well, once it's on, uh, I know you're I, just messing with it now, but once it's on, is it okay or no? Yeah, it's, it's on well, there, yeah. yes. I'm bitching, by the way. That's what I do. Yeah. No, but no, I, I mean, you know, hey, we're just sharing, you know, thoughts. Yeah. It moves a little bit, though, and it's not snug. I mean... Well, most of us are OCD, know. brother, and, and shit like that books the shit out of us. <laughs> know that, right, Brian? It might be yours, because mine doesn't do that. Look, I'm pressing down, and it won't. It doesn't move. Yeah. It might be mine. Like I said, I just, you know. You might have mine. to MacGyver it. I might. Yeah, there you go. Enlarge that so, hole. Let's do this. How about a giveaway? You guys interested in that? Yeah? Giveaway? Giveaway? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so the way the giveaway is going to work is the same as last week. I have a uh, trivia question about uh, either myself or Mike Vapes' channel, and um, whoever the first person is to answer the question in the comment section will win the device. Now, I must clarify. If you are a vape reviewer or if you already have the EVIC, please don't uh, try to answer the question because I want to try to get this in the hands of somebody that doesn't have one that needs a mod. Um, so whoever comments first, you're the winner. And what I want you to do is go to my the Vapor Chronicles page, click on the About section, and then send me a message, and I will respond to you. Um, but I want you to send me a message with your shipping address. I will ship it out as soon as possible, and you will enjoy the eBay. So this is the question. 
as you know, I enjoy drinking coffee. I drink coffee every day. I like a specific type of coffee, and um, I want to know the brand and the flavor coffee that I drink. Go. Folgers in that cup. <laughs> I have no oh, idea. you got to watch the comments on this one. I don't remember the flavor. Uh, speaking about comments, uh, just so people know, to the uh, pre-order on the D, uh, DNA 200, I'm putting a link in there. From where? What company? Uh, Pro Vapes, I believe. Proto, sorry, Proto Vapor. It's in the link now. Oh shit, they can't put a link in there. Son of a bitch. <sighs> okay. Um, I'll just read out the website just in case. I'm All right, we have a winner. We have a winner. The winner is Todd F. Todd F. Congratulations, you have won. The Evic VT, the coffee that I drink is Starbucks Sumatra with the K-Cups up in my Keurig. So congratulations, you won, and uh, that's pretty awesome. I hope you enjoy. Contact me, and I will send it out as soon as possible. So that's it. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, I love that coffee. My uh, daughter got me hooked on it. It's great. It is great. Uh, just uh, in case anybody wants to look up the site, it's Proto Vapor. It's P-R-O-T-O-V-A-P-O-R.com, and it's going to be the Evolved DNA uh, 200D. And it's got a re. Jeez, I love how they changed the retail prices. <laughs> Yesterday it was there at seventy nine dollars. Now it's got seventy nine dollars to three hundred seventy nine dollars and seventy five cents. I don't know what the hell. Well, this is just to buy the chip itself only. Yeah. Oh, I see what they're doing. It's five. It's one to five chips. Yeah. Yeah. One chip's eighty bucks. I mean, that's not bad. I mean, that's in leagues with the SX Mini M class. So, you know, no complaints from me. So, how's your? Uh, have you started with your box mod that you're building? Uh, yeah, it's over at the uh, what do you call it? The powder coater. And nice. then I've got another one, uh, Vapor Lips. Uh, he's gonna have mine in about a week or two. So do you think uh, for the next show that you're going to be on, you'll have be ready to go? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll, probably both, I'll probably have both boxes. So we're all going to get to see your custom uh, SX350J box, dual 18650. Dual, eight, um, and, uh, and I put uh, the 150-watt version in it. Right, 150-watt yeah, yeah. chip. Nice. Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm so gonna, excited I'm to see I'm actually going to have one uh, early next week. Who is? I'm going to have a dual 18650. Oh yeah, uh, I, well I've I've started uh, seeing them uh, listed. Um, I'm I've been trying to get Nico to build one. He he was trying to sell me a, one of his prototypes, or he, I guess he sold one of his prototypes for I don't know almost a thousand bucks. I'm like, man, no fucking way. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know I'm not gonna spend a thousand dollars on on that box. <laughs> yeah, I got a friend of mine that's sending me one. Cool. Yep, just found out. Knowing knowing you, the price is right. <laughs> Are you doing it to review it? Oh, yeah, you're sending it to me for a review. Oh, uh, yeah, that's why I said price is right. <laughs> Mike, who sent it to you? A friend of mine. <laughs> what, Mr. Papa Giorgio from the local fucking mafia? Uh, the guy, the guy that owns the diner down the block. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he makes box mods in his basement. I have a question for you, Mike. Yeah. Did you did you get your Hannah mods yet? No. It's coming from Florida, and it gets stuck in... Uh, Snoopy, Opaka, Loca, whatever it's called, that post office. Uh, it says that I should have it on uh, Saturday. Okay. Is this a clone no, or, or original, or I'm just confused? I, I don't know the whole conversation there. It's a new vapor okay. shark. I ordered the Hannah Mods, the 3D printed one that's oh. got a single 18650 attachment and a dual 18650 attachment. I mean, is make. it actually made by Hannah Mods, or is it it's, a. No, it's a Hannah Mods. It's oh, on really? there. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I know they were doing a, that new single one. I didn't realize it was 3D printed, but I haven't kept it. I haven't been on their site in weeks, so I don't it's know. It's dual and single. It's both. Yeah, it's, in it's like device. 110 bucks. Can't beat that. No. Yeah, so. Yeah, I'm just. I'm really interested to see how the seam is, where the two uh, areas fit together. It should be interesting to see that. Yes. You know, one conversation I've been having with some people is that you know, you know, the worst—I don't mean to get in the worst-case scenario here—but uh, 
Uh, have any of you guys th thought about doing DIY uh, juices yourself? You know, I'm, I'm just thinking of what happens if the FDA, you know, gets crazy and all that stuff. And has anybody, you know, thought about doing any of that kind of stuff yet? DIY stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I have. I just I, I get overwhelmed as soon as I think about it because I know I'm, I have no time as it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't no. want to actually do do it myself, but I'd like to have in the future my juice uh, juice line. Well, you know, you were you were mentioning about uh, 3D printing just a second ago. Hey guys, do me do me a favor. I'm sorry to interrupt, but there's something in the comment section. Somebody had said that they answered the question before, and I didn't see it. So if yeah. that is is that true? Can somebody? I don't check? know. Can you go through the comments? I'm trying right now. Can somebody else check too? About what? It won't let me go through. Oh, wait a minute, man. I want to make sure the right winner won. Oh, there it is. Oh. Okay, let me see. Oh, that's where you're checking. Sorry. Well, the reason I was mentioning about DIY is not only just about the juices. Uh, you guys are aware of when you were talking about 3D printing. A lot of people obviously know that you can 3D. Oh shit! Yeah. Print. He's right. He's right. Okay, this is the deal. Big O Vapor. You are also going to win another. Hold on. Man, how many of those things you got? A lot. <laughs> Jesus. I have another Evic, and Big O Vapor, you have one too. So you guys heard it. Two Evics given away on this show tonight. Cool. I'm oh, mad of my word. What can I say? Absolutely, man. Oh, no yeah. Doubt. Big O Vapor said it right before uh, Todd F. So contact me. That was my mistake, Todd F. You got lucky, but you did answer correctly anyway, and uh, that was my mistake. So, hey, there you go. Two Evics. Boom. It popped up at the same time, too, both of them. So unless it's... unless Big O has some sort of magical way to go into the comments and add comments <laughs> after the fact. Wait, who spelled it right? <laughs> oh, you're right, Mike. Good call. <laughs> Sumatra is not with an O. You're right. Uh, Todd spelled it right. Actually, neither of them spelled it right. <laughs> Todd, Todd spelled it really right real fast. <laughs> Todd, Todd spelled it Sumatra. With a uh, S U M A T A, and then uh, Big O spelled it Sumatra with an O. Who and, actually uh, spelled it right, though? Let's see down the neither comments. of them. Oh yeah, nobody else. Just them to oh, Todd did uh, respond again with the correct spelling, so I guess okay. he knew that. Yeah. So congratulations to you guys. Well, <laughs> I, hope, I, hope I just put one in my in your comments. <laughs> spelled right. <laughs> You won, David. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. You're already a big winner anyway. So I'm going to give David my <laughs> 200 I got right here. Holy sh... No, is that... He's is that... Shit. Okay. <laughs> it's supposed to be a secret. It's probably an SMY. Uh, yeah. Mike's Other like, people got I'm going to my, I'm gonna give him my DNA 200. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Other people got permission to show theirs, except for me. I'm only... Yeah, show my DNA 200 right there, see? Right there. Right Look, there. One more time. Yeah, quick. Right there, see? Right there. I got, that, got, that D, got that DNA 200 right here. <laughs> <laughs> Nuclear powered cells, man, for uh, 200 watts. <laughs> Stay tuned to the Vapor Chronicles this week, though, because I'll be reviewing this 0.5 ohm pen vape. Snow Wolf 200, baby. Right here. This is where it is. Anyway, the last thing I wanted to say about the, the DIY is. You guys do know that you can uh, 3D print in titanium and stainless steel, right? You can 3D print in titanium and stainless steel? Yes. And I'm, I'm just waiting for some guy, because I haven't found anybody to do it. I, I wouldn't mind being the oh, first 3D one. 3D print the mod made out of titanium? Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. I'm wondering, what is he saying? Or, or, or stainless steel. Well, thing is, nobody's done it. I want a mod that's 3D printed in, in titanium of Mike Vapes' entire body. <laughs> with dual 26650s. So I guess the point is I'm trying to make is that there's no stopping it. You know what I'm saying? If they say, hey, we're not going to make this stuff, it's not allowed, I mean, there's just no stopping it at this point. How yeah. can you stop 3D printing? There's no way. It's going to go underground, worst case. Yeah, well, the chips, all unregulated. I can, I'm, let's put it this way, man. I'm fine with Canthal. I mean, you know, push comes a shove. Nobody's going to stop me from vaping. That's bottom line to it. FDA, nobody. 
Well, all I know is that uh, if anything ever happens, I'm going to Big Lou's house because I know where he lives. <laughs> I know all the juice I want. <laughs> now, but we all need to fight. We need to sign up, you know. I got to sign up on Casa.org. I know there was uh, something going on in New York. Today it was listed uh, that they want to ban uh, vaping indoors. Indoor vaping now. And I think it has to do with uh, banning it for inside vape shops. So I'm not, you're going to go into a vape shop and you can't vape in a vape shop. Yeah. I remember, oh, the, at least where I live, there was countless bars that had restaurants in them when they changed the smoking, did the no smoking ban that went out of business overnight. Right. So, it's gonna be a so same how do you ban vaping in a vape shop? I mean, I understand in restaurants, you know, places where you eat, okay, fine. And I, I don't want to walk around in a, in a supermarket blowing clouds. I think that's stupid, first of all. But uh, in a vape shop, you can't vape. You got your vegetables, you got your fresh meat, fucking hit some clouds. Yeah. Um, all right, guys, well, we've run out of time, so... We've already passed our one-hour time limit, which we're sticklers for rules here. I want to thank all of you guys that came in tonight and watched. There's actually a lot of people in here tonight, so I really appreciate all the love and support. Hopefully you found this episode entertaining, educational, informative. Fight for your right to vape, as Mike said, because you know his ass is out there fighting. David's fighting, and I'm fighting too, so we need all the help we can get. There's a lot of bullshit out there, propaganda, and we need to be a strong community to fight against the bullshit. So thanks for watching, guys. Everyone say your goodbyes. Mike? Yes, and uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. And stay tuned after the show. I got a video coming up. I'm doing a giveaway on a Tesla 60-watt that does sort of does temp control. So stay tuned for the giveaway tonight on my channel. And thank you. And David? Well, I'll definitely be there. I'll show, I'll show up. No, I just want to say, uh, hey, uh, BK, I miss you, bro. Hope to see you on next week. And, yeah, that'll um, be okay. And uh, thanks for having me on again, guys. I love it every time. Thanks. Thanks for having us, David. And uh, Mike, why don't you why don't you take us out with a little bit of that Gomez shit?